Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video I take a 16 inch T, weld it onto a 16 inch elbow, reducing down to 14 inch. So let's get this started. First things first, I've got to weld the weld neck onto the T. I've done my usual two tacks, 12 and 6. And I've flipped it 90 degrees. Because of the type of tea I had, it didn't lay flat on the table, so I propped it up underneath and laid a level on top with two bolts, spacing it out before leveling off the flange to the tea. Once it's done, I flipped it around so I can attach it to my turning handle. This is where a crane comes in handy, because already this tea is too heavy to carry. I'm simply welding it in quarters. Usually I can get away with doing a root and cap, but because this pipe had such a huge prep on it because it's 16 inch, I had to do a root, fill and then a cap. Midway through the cap, I ran out of wire. And that's the MIG wire I use, 1mm solid copper coated wire. And now I can get back to it. I'm just finishing off the cap. And then it's done, I put it to the side. While making the job, I wasn't too sure how I was going to go about making it. Earlier in the week, two other welders made the same pieces and both of them had problems with how big the pipe was. So I was trying to work out exactly how to do it. So you see me do a bit of double handling. I'm welding the weld neck and the reducer onto this piece of pipe now, but later on I go and add the elbow onto here because I wasn't sure how much weight was going to be involved in this piece. Again, this video here isn't so much of a welding tutorial, more of a fabricating tutorial. There's plenty of tutorials out there to show you exactly how to weld, but I want to focus on my fabrication techniques. Because I've noticed a lot of people on YouTube, their priority isn't speed. For me, the way how I work and the types of jobs that I've got, speed is the most important. So this piece here, for example, took three and a half to four hours to make. So that's why I'm doing things a little bit different from what you lot may think is right. But welding is an art and everyone has their own techniques and ways of making it.
But here, I'm tacking on the flange and I've realized that there's a big gap. So I've cut it because the piece of pipe going between the T and the flange is so small, you wouldn't see if it's not level anyway. So you just have to even out the gaps. And I tack on the inside sometimes because it's big pipe, you can get access to it. So I can put some nice tacks on it that I'll burn away later on. And here, like I said, I've gone back to pick the elbow up. I was going to put the elbow on the T, then I realised welding the T and the elbow would be too much. And we don't have any manipulators, it's all turned by hand. So I have to consider the weight and the size and the awkwardness of welding something. So later on you're going to see I'm going to skip through welding the elbow a lot more faster. And here is a mistake I made. I've used my 3mm spacer. It's a little bit bent and I've tacked the top and now I've tacked the bottom and I can't get it out. It's trapped in there. Nor can I reach a hammer to smack it through. So I had to sacrifice it. You live and learn. So yeah, I'm just speeding through welding this. Some of my other videos have better arc shots, but this video here, because the pipe's so big, I just wanted to get it done. I didn't want to spend too much time filming it. And again, the prep between the reducer as well as the elbow was big, so I put a fill and then a cap. Usually I can get away with just doing a root and a cap, like I said, I work in a way where speed is important, but still quality has to be up there. But speed was the discipline I learned and I focused towards. I'm just simply welding the last pieces of the T. But if you could imagine having that 16 inch elbow on the other side of this T rolling around. Personally, it would have bent my turning handle and possibly made my table fall over trying to support the weight of it. Now I get comments asking where the pipe goes and it's usually data centers or residential buildings so it's all low pressure anyways. The gap's a little bit big so I'm wiggling it a little bit. In the meantime, I just want to thank everyone for the support that they've given me. My channel's blown up way bigger than I ever thought, and I'm grateful for that. And I've been working in the background to get some discount codes for Uselot. So hopefully soon, there'll be a link in the description getting Uselot 10% off from the welding suppliers that I use. You can find everything there from my welding mask to consumables to the backpack that I use on my back. Here we go, we're done. This was the correct decision to do because now I only have one positional to do with this T. Having an elbow on it would just make this a lot more harder, having to move around all that weight and level it off. One thing I always try to practice is safety. So my V stands are locked out because they have a tendency to drop once they're worn out. And I've also got the strap around the flange in case it does drop.
So I've put the first tack once everything's mostly level. This way here, it doesn't move so much and it's easier to, uh, to get into its next position. And like now, the tack's made it pull. And you can see that I used the crane to twist the pipe to make it level. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth, checking. Because any movement I do here possibly can move the flange elsewhere, so I'm always checking. The last thing you want to do is put a tack on it, not check it, weld it up, and the flanges aren't level. So my first axis is level and the bolt holes are correct. So now I've picked it up and I can level the second axis and it's done. It just involves positional welding it. Again, you can see I put the V-stand underneath the flange safety always So my roots in this was such an uncomfortable position but i wanted to keep most of the weight down on the ground so i didn't have to worry about it falling over or anything and i'm filling the alignment of the fittings wasn't perfect the elbow was bigger than the t so there was an overhang so i ground that down so i could put my next run in Now it's done, I can go around it and I can cap it off with the third run. But be easy on me guys, this was a hard weld to do, it was very uncomfortable. It's not my best welding but it will do. And here's it done. This job in all took around 4 hours I would say. It was a nice little piece to do. I should say big piece rather. I wouldn't say it was too complicated. I've done pieces like this before. It was just awkward. But I find it fun to challenge myself to see how I can make this. But here's the position. Or like I said, be easy on me. I did my best. I'd just like to use this time to say thanks for all the support and the continued support. I'll keep on pumping out videos for Uslot Weekly. Showing Uslot basically my life as a welder. If you don't like what you see, hit that subscribe button and leave a like and a comment. Thanks for watching. Click on Zombie Apocalypse.